This section will cover how queue lists interact with each other on the EOS and go over some of the tools available to help you manage multiple queue lists on the EOS. I currently have two queue lists that I have loaded on my console. I have my queue list number one loaded into the main playback fader pair, and I have queue list number two loaded into one of my aux faders. And what's nice about this arrangement is I can simply hit the go button on the corresponding fader when I need those queues to begin to run. So in our example, I have my main queue list, my queue list number one, maybe is the general queues for some kind of variety show or something. And I am stepping through queues for this show and I get to a point where maybe we have a presenter who is going to be introducing an act that's going to come on stage. And what I've done is I've built a second queue list that contain the cues for that act. Maybe it's a band that's going to perform a song. So I go into my queue number three, which is the, the setup queue, and the host now introduces the band. And now I can simply use the go button for queue list two to begin the show. And maybe it's a very short show. Now, while I've got this interaction happening, I want to talk about a feature called assert. And now this is the actual manual assert command, and it's a, a command that's located here in the fader control section of the board. Now what this allows me to do is assert on a, a, an instance by instance basis. If I am now looking at a queue that's in queue list number two and I want queue list one to assert its control over any channels that happen to be shared, I can push and hold assert and hit the load button of the queue list that I want to make active, and that will happen. And I can simply keep asserting each queue list and they'll just kind of go back and forth and send any shared channels to the values that are there. So that's like using assert to do manual asserts between two queue lists or multiple queue lists that I might have active at one time. When I am finished with the act, I, I am at the last queue and I'm now ready for the main queue list to take over and finish, finish everything up. So I can continue to push go and our playback status will change to let us know that we're now in queue list one and I've my main queue list is now controlling things. And I'm about to push go on my queue number five, which is my blocked and asserted queue to get the blackout. We do not have a blackout. Well, let's deconstruct this a little bit. What happened? In my channel display, I can see that channel six has a level of full and I'm realizing, aha, channel six is a light that came on in queue list number two. Now what's interesting is that channel six never received a move instruction from queue list number one. So queue list number one doesn't even pay attention to channel six. So what's happened now is that even though I have an assert queue for my queue number five, remember that an assert queue plays back tracked zeros as move instructions. So we did get the blackout on any channels that queue list one had ownership of, but because channel six has no data, queue list one doesn't own channel six and therefore the assert queue did not affect that channel. So there is yet another command that allows queue list one or this particular queue number five in list one to grab any channels that it does not have owned at this point and that is using the all fade command. So if I make Q5 an all fade by using the, the soft key for all fade Q5 and it's AF slash MF and I can make hit all fade, and I put the all fade flag in Q number five. So now Q5 is a block for editing purposes. It's an assert so that we will treat tracked zeros as move instructions. And now it is an all fade, which says any channel that I do not own at this point, for example, channel six, I want to take those channels intensity to zero. So it really is an all fade. So let's take a look at that. If I back up into Q number four, I'll cut to queue number four using timing disabled and back. And now when I take this queue, I do get the blackout. And this was because channel six is owned by queue list number two and Q5 and queue list number one said, no, I'm going to fade everybody and all fade out. So that's what happened there. To look at a few additional functions available in multiple queue list interaction, I want to take us to the queue list index. And what we're really looking right now is the area with the columns fader, independent, and HTP, and, and what those mean. 
I'm going to start with HTP, and essentially what this allows you to do is set a queue list uh, to LTP or HTP. And this really refers to intensities. If a queue list and its default state is LTP, it behaves as last action. So whichever queue list gives a channel the most recent move instruction, that channel's intensity will go to that level. If I set a queue list to highest takes precedence, then it is whichever queue list is telling that channel to be at a higher level will have control of that channel's intensity. Non-intensity parameters will always be latest takes precedence in this case. Now covering the area of fader behavior and whether or not this queue list is independent, I have created a queue list number three that I have set to both of these. I have it set to be an intensity master, which is one of the options under fader. You can be proportional or an intensity master. And I have also turned on the independent feature for queue list number three. Now what this means, an intensity master simply means that the fader that queue list three gets assigned to behaves like a grand master for that queue list. All of the moves occur, yet the fader just simply controls the intensity. So that is a very, uh, very nice way to have intensity control on a fader of that entire queue list. What independent does is adds kind of an, a, a new level of priority. It's kind of like putting this particular queue list in a little VIP club. And the nice thing about this is that all queue lists that are labeled as independent can grab control or, or grab ownership of channels from other independent queue lists as well as queue lists that are not independent. Now in contrast, queue lists that are not independent cannot grab control from an independent queue list. So it really is an exclusive level of priority. It's, it is like a VIP club. So let's take a look at how that's going to play out when we're using multiple queue lists. I'm going to go to live and load queue list three into an available fader. Now I'm going to run queues in each of my lists. So I now have some data uh, playing back from queue list number one. I have some data playing back from queue list number two. And now I'm going to play back a queue that is in my queue list number three, which again is configured as intensity master and independent. And what I have in this particular queue is an effect running on my LED wall. Now what you'll notice is that because it's independent, I have overridden any values that were being played back by either list one or list two. And now if you look at the fader status information directly above the load button or on your playback status display in the appropriate fader for that, for that queue list, you'll see a little blue eye. What that indicates is that this queue list is running in an independent mode and has overridden levels from any other queue lists that may be active. Now I can push go all I want here in my other queue lists and they're not affecting anything that's happening in my queue list number three because it's independent. So let's take a look at our blackout queue. I am going to go to queue one slash four to prep us for our blocked all fade assert queue here. And when I take that queue, well, we do get blackout on queue list one and queue list two. However, because queue list three is still in the VIP club, queue list number one was not able to grab control of the channels that are contained in queue list number three. So in this case, what we want to do is really send a message over to queue list number three to tell it to go ahead and take a blackout. And we can do this using the external links feature. And what I want to do is in queue number five in list one, I want to use my execute soft key to execute queue list three, queue number two, which I know is a blackout in a zero count in that list. So now we're telling the independent list to go to a blackout at exactly the same time that we are blocked and asserted and all fade the other queue lists. So let's take a look at that. So if I'm going to look in my queue list number one and I press go and finally press go for my blackout, we get a blackout on stage, which is a combination command of assert all fade and then an additional command to send queue list three to its own blackout. 
and those are some of the tools available to you on the EOS to help you manage multiple queue lists.